the very part that God wants to talk to you about today is a relationship with the Holy Spirit, a commitment to grow with the Holy Spirit that is in control. Isn't that awesome? That we can grow with the Holy Spirit that is always available and ready to do the extraordinary things in our lives. But anyway, so today, the finished work of Christ manifest in our lives when we learn to be led by the Holy Spirit. And isn't that beautiful that we can be led by the Holy Spirit? Being led by the Holy Spirit changes every aspect of our lives. And we know that there's a word that I see the green is slightly vivid here today uh, for you, but it is a striking green and it's to get your attention. And that striking green is, since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. That means don't start walking on your own accord. Walk with the Holy Spirit that will be your guide. He will order your footsteps exactly where you need to be at all the right times. Amen? And the Holy Spirit is our personal guide and our unseen partner in life. Now think about it. You've got a partner. The Holy Spirit is your partner. He's with you wherever you go. He's with you in your bedroom. He's with you in the bath. He's with you in the garage. He's with you in the garden. He's with you while you go shopping. You actually don't go on your own. (laughs) Amen. (laughs) He's everywhere. Uh, That is where he is. So we know that the book of Acts, and this is the part that I love so much, and I've been meditating a lot on the book of Acts this week, and it really, the Lord had my attention on um, us as children of God. There needs to be something different about us. If we look downcasted, and if we look weak, and we are confused, then where's the Holy Spirit? Because he says, and the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Spirit. And we know that the word of God says the joy of the Lord is our strength. So when we allow our flesh to be vivid, we don't have strength to overcome the hurdles and the storms of life. So God is giving us extra backup. You know, you always hear of people saying, but what backup have you got? What is your backup plan? (laughs) Or where is your your plan ahead before you start? And if you've consulted the Holy Spirit, then you've got the backup plan. But the backup plan always comes with joy that he puts inside of us. Because that joy has the power and the authority when the cares of life become too uh, enormous to handle in the natural. And so remember, when we fi- feel overwhelmed, or we feel emotionally, I can't do this, just track back a little bit and just say, Holy Spirit, I've messed up. I've not invited you into this. Help me. Because the minute you ask the Holy Spirit, He is a very present need and a help in time of need. We need him more than anything else, but he helps us in a time of need. But when we think carnally and we think according to our flesh, we'll always expect the worst is going to happen. We'll give the most negative report about anything. And there was Joshua and Caleb and all of them after they'd gone through all the character building in the desert, in the wilderness. And they got to uh, the place where they were meant to be. They all went there with a viewpoint to go and check the land, to see how would they get in, to study it. What are the people like? Where's what? Where's this? Where's that? They were the spies. They came back with a good report. And they got connected with a harlot. And they didn't do business. She just protected them. There was no hanky-panky. It was just an absolute God-ordained connection. 
She was a wise woman, and she's even mentioned further down in the lineage. If you think about it, God used her, so she had an encounter. She had a change of heart, and everything about her life changed because she did something valuable at the right time for the Father, for our Heavenly Father. So I thank the Lord for what He has done yet today, that He has filled you with joy And he's redirected your footsteps back to the Holy Spirit. Because when we're there, we're in a good place. We can do all things. He says, but let your heart keep my command. So it mustn't be just a now and then. It must become a lifestyle. It can't be a now and then situation. It's got to become a lifestyle thing. And so the lifestyle that you do is keep his commandments. Because verse 2 says, for the strength of days and long life. Can you see that we have a satisfying long life if we are rule-keeping people? I'm not talking about legalism. I'm not talking about being so uh, 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 stuck in your own personal rules that you limit God. I'm talking if God says, uh, 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 do not drink and get drunk, then rather don't drink. Because he's doing that for your protection. When he says your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, try and take care of your body because it's going to serve you well in the end. If we don't take care of our bodies, how can it serve us well in the end, right? If we don't wash our faces, we're never going to walk around with beautiful, shiny, happy faces. We're going to be stuck under all of this, whatever you've been through. And I believe that that is why it is for length of days and long life and peace they will add to you. So the way we manage God's requirements and his requirements is the law he's given us. When we steal, we know we can land up in jail. Who wants to go to jail? No one wants to. Who wants to break rules and get into trouble? It's not even a peaceful or a lovely life. It is a life of worry and full of nonsense. And so that is why it says, do not forget my law. And when it drops in your heart, it becomes a lifestyle. And the lifestyle is the way you think through. And he says in verse 3, Let not mercy and truth forsake you. With other words, get the characteristics of the Holy Spirit. His mercy is always available for us. His grace is always there. Let us show mercy and grace to others. He says, bind them around your neck. With other words, let this really be who you are. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablets of your heart. So this is something that you ponder on, you think about it, you make decisions out of it. And he says in Proverbs 3 verse 4, And so find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. So you can see that if we do this, we find favor everywhere and it removes limitations from our lives. So many times, Attitudes can become the biggest uh, blessing blocker. Bad attitudes can remove people away from you instead of drawing them closer to you. So, uh, I don't care. What? No. Rude. Abrasive. How does that bring any favor your way? Because mercy and grace is not even there. So who wants to negotiate with anybody that looks like a bulldog? (laughs) Amen? Uh, You don't want that. And so that's not the, the open door to the blessing. That attitude is not that because it is not bound around our neck, a lifestyle that God's talking about. And then he says the most important in verse 5, he says, trust in the Lord with All your heart. Now, this all your heart is not a double standard. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, Will you go and see that show? You know that they're naked. You know that they 
uh, get up to monkey business. Are you still going to see the show? No. No, no, thank you. Because it's not where I belong. So bound it around your neck. He says, with all your heart, I bet you can only go and have that quick cup of coffee. No one will know. No, bind it around your neck. Let your decisions come out of integrity is the word of God. Because who can trust someone who's got double standards? Come see, come saw. You can't trust a person who's not committed and loyal to what God says about it. He says, lean not on your own understanding. And that is quite a limitation. When we lean on our own understanding without inquiring from the Father, we act very strange. Amen? And that is the foothold that Satan uses to disrupt, to destroy, and to absolutely cause a lot of harm in relationships and in wherever you go. He says, in all your ways, in verse 6, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. I love the fact that God is the director of our paths and that he says that we can be wise. Do not be wise in your own strength and in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from all evil. So that you see when that invitation comes and they say, oh, those ladies dance on the tables and you're going to be greatly entertained. Well, I mean, that's not even an option you're looking at. Who wants to go to that kind of entertainment where you don't even know where to put your face? Amen? Then even that food is not welcome because if it's served on that kind of platform, who wants to be part of that? I'm just saying that that is what companies sometimes do to reward, reward people in the corporate world with, is to go and have some nonsense. It's not an option. There's just too much to give up to actually compromise. And so he says they fear the Lord and depart from evil. With other words, if you're going in there, okay, Holy Spirit, you better stay outside here. I'm just going to go and have a moment with the boys. I mean, how is that going to work for you when you get to heaven? Are you going to leave the Holy Spirit? Holy Spirit, you can't tell them anything. I want to get to heaven. How's that going to help you? The Lord says, my eye searches the whole earth, and I know exactly who my offspring is. Isn't that true? Paraphrasing. But you can't leave the Holy Spirit somewhere. He's sitting there like that. He's saying, you shouldn't be here. You shouldn't be here. You're looking for trouble, and you lied about being here. Double standards. So is that what God is saying, that those are our choices? No. And he says, I will be health to your flesh. I love that. So your choices, in actual fact, gives you greater health. And he says, and strength to your bones. We've said it before, but bitterness and unforgiveness causes havoc with bones. Because the mindset and bitterness dries up the bones and it crumbles the bones. So we don't want to be sick like that and we don't want any of that to have an impact on our lives, right? And verse 9 says, honor the Lord with your possessions. As Pastor Dean was talking this morning, we honor the Lord because we want to, well, we want to love the Lord. We want to show our appreciation to the Father. He says, and with the first fruit of all your increase, he says, honor him with that. That means your trust is not in your achievement. Your trust is in what the Lord is doing through you. So that your bonds in verse 10 will be filled with plenty. Plenty, plenty to sow, plenty to do, plenty to be the instrument in God's hands, and your vats will overflow with new wine. And this new wine is refreshing and health, good health, and everything that God has got for you. Isn't that beautiful? We're never going to say no thanks to that. 
And then in Proverbs 5 and 6, it says lean, and this is the amplified, lean on and trust in and be confident. Family of God, when you throw your confidence away, you're actually denying the Lord to work through you. Don't throw your confidence away because God is the confident builder. And he says, in the Lord, with all your heart and your mind, and he says, and do not rely on your own insight or understanding. And in all of your ways, he says, know, recognize, and acknowledge him. Because when we acknowledge the Holy Spirit in our lives, and I will direct and make straight and plain your path. Who's had to make difficult decisions this week? Amen? And when you make those difficult decisions, you've always got two different voices trying to prompt you. And the self and the fear and the concern, you obviously know that's not God. You know that the Holy Spirit will not put you in fear. He will always speak a direct word or he'll usher your footsteps to make the right decision. But if we are going to be intimidated in a difficult decision and we're going to allow that to put a heavy load on us, that is a yoke. That's not the Lord. So we've got to recognize when there's a yoke. Because if it's a yoke pressing you down, it is not the Lord. But also remember, sometimes you will have the prompting in your heart to pray about it first. And we mustn't miss that because the Holy Spirit is drawing you nearer because he wants to speak to you direction as far as that is concerned. And please don't miss that appointment because John 15 verse 16 says, you did not choose me. And he's so right. But I chose you and appointed you, he says. You and I are appointed that you should go and bear the fruit. And that beautiful fruit is what God has got for us. He says that your fruit should remain and that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. So isn't that beautiful? In his name, he will give it to you. There'll be no blockage. You'll have open door, carte blanche. Your prayers will be answered. Amen? Uh, did you ever watch the, it's a Christian movie, it's called Champion. Uh, it was on Daystar uh, yesterday, last night, at 4.30. It was an incredible show of a little girl that lands up believing that her father's going to be okay. And he was a, a racer. And he killed another man's son with his vehicle. He took him off the road. And it was his intention to cause harm. And then uh, 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 the process they went through, through a forgiving and forgiving and forgiving. And the minister, actually, when he heard who this man is, that he was the one that killed his son, he wanted nothing to do with him, but he couldn't get work anywhere. And so the preacher, in fact, actually asked him to give him some work so that he could fix his um, cottage and uh, do things. And uh, the father of the deceased son goes to, a, to the racetrack where they're having their first service. And he lands up sitting next to the little girl that's actually the killer's daughter. And she says, and she had the most beautiful eyes. And he, uh, she says, mind me, but I do pray loud because I want God to hear me. And I think what beautiful faith is that? And he overhears how she prays for her dad that has been sad ever since he had the accident with the racing. And then she calls out certain things. And then he realizes that this is the killer's daughter sitting next to him. And how the story, it is well worth seeing how forgiveness really can be in action. And the preacher's a wife, unknown, this rich, wealthy father who lost the son, his son actually shot the preacher's wife 
in a leg. And he was like a gangster. And he never knew that about his son. And when he walked into the home, he actually saw the video of his son helping this woman, becoming a helper, assisting her because forgiveness took place. So the one that caused the destruction was his son. And his life was so out of control. And he never knew that about his son. And how the Lord reunited them. Well worth seeing, champion. It is an excellent uh, show to see of forgiveness. And in action, that they love each other and all their lives get restored. But uh, brilliant. And that, to me, is the best example of go and be fruit. And much fruit. And lasting fruit. Because the preacher... His wife was walking around with a cane, and he never knew that before because he always saw her sitting. He never knew that she was limping, and his son had caused that, and he didn't know that. And so when he saw that, and he actually lived through the moment, seeing that his son was actually turning his life around, it touched him. Then he started forgiving then he forgave the young man that killed his son. And so John 15 verse 16, he says that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. So that means no limitation. No limitation. When we grow in this fruit-bearing lifestyle, showing grace, showing mercy, and doing what is right. You've got God right there in the center of it all. And there's no limitation for you. So when we truly trust the Lord with our hearts, we trust him with our spirit. Our spirit man. Because there's still that spirit man of us that is still alive, right? It's the one we've been training all our lives to live and become more like Jesus. That old soul, the old way of thinking, and if we look at that heart, the heart in the scripture above we looked at is not referring to the physical heart, but a spiritual heart. And a spiritual heart is having the compassion of the Father, having the Lord's motivations, His mercy, His grace that you show. That's that spiritual heart that's got to grow. Because if we can walk Past people that are in need and did not stir our heart, something's wrong. Because God always had and still has compassion, right? So the heart is the core of us and it's hidden in the spirit man, right? Are you all with me? So what does the spirit man do? It agrees with and believes the word. And many times we've got to, Father, I call forth the spirit man in me in this. That I want to hear your instruction. I don't want my flesh, but I want you to speak to my heart. Because many times we don't even take the warnings of a prompting that the Holy Spirit prompts you with. You reason it away. Is that not right? think maybe oh no this you know you reason it away but the prompting which is the spirit warning you about something we reason it away but many times it could be that God is just saying not the right time wait not the right time amen and we've all been through those testing grounds haven't we so when we believe with our spirits that's the spirit man that's connected to the Holy Spirit, connected to the Lord. Our belief surpasses what we see in the natural into the physical world, right? So instead, we believe the word which is spiritually reality. That's our reality. Because you'll often hear when people are trying to establish where you at, they say, what is real to you about the story? What is your reality? What is your take on this? With other words, what do you understand about this? 
And when people then verbalize, then you can evaluate and find out where are they at? Or have they thought this through? Are they working through other emotions? Are there other contributing factors that has brought them to this point of making that decision? Amen? So the Lord wants to guide us into the predestined path for us, which is a good one. God's plans for us are good. They are valuable for us. They're not bad plans. They are good plans. And that good plan includes long satisfying a good life. Amen? And with the Holy Spirit's help, that he wants us to take certain instructions. And family, I believe that as believers, we miss this one many times. Not taking instructions from the Holy Spirit. And I'm sure all of you will agree with me that we miss this many times because of busy schedules. Or with, I'll do this later. I can't deal with it now because of busy schedules. But his instructions of direction from him to lead us into that path. But you've always got to remember that the voices you listen to could be fear could be loss, fear of change, fear of loss. Those are two biggies. If people make decisions out of fear of loss, it'll always have sorrow to it. Then it's not really a blessing. It's putting another yoke on someone else. So when you freely do something, there's freedom. And the blessing of that, that beautiful seed, will bring freedom and joy, right? So the Holy Spirit is a great teacher, and he knows the direction we should take in every situation. Every situation. He knows exactly what direction it should be. He knows the way forward. And many times just acknowledging and saying, Lord, reveal to me the way forward. Make that sure to me. Speak to me about it. And you'll be doing something and suddenly you'll pop up a thought. Yes, I never looked at that. And then you'd walk away and he's communing the whole time with you about that that you asked him. And I love that about God's faithfulness is that the Holy Spirit will prompt you, speak to you throughout the day. Amen. And so with mere human understanding, we will go in a way that seems right. When we say the word seem, that's not sure. But the end of the seem leads to destruction. So don't do a thing with other motives attached to it. Because it will lead to destruction. It has to be, Holy Spirit, thank you for guiding me. Speak to me about this. Because when you do, there's no seem tolerating and then coming under witchcraft and control. I believe in the latter days, the greatest attack on the body of Christ is witchcraft. There can be nothing wrong with you but go against someone and suddenly you've got a sore neck or a sore back or you've got this thing in your back and you think, what on earth is going on here? Witchcraft. But remember, no weapon formed against us prospers. And you have to talk to that mountain when it shows up. Because if we don't talk to it and give it instruction, it stays because it's there to wear you out. Witchcraft. Proverbs 3 verse 5 says to us today, trust God from the bottom of your heart. It's just a term that is used, but it really is all of your heart. He says, don't try to figure out everything on your own. We don't have all the answers. And there's nothing wrong in saying, I don't have all the answers. Because that means we didn't fail but why don't we pray about this? 
and join hands and pray, Lord, we need your direction. We need an answer to this. Will you show us how? And you know, those simple prayers always get answered. They always get answered because we come as, as submitted children to our Heavenly Father. And He hears us. It's all about relationship with the Holy Spirit. And He says in verse 6 to us, listen for God's voice. You can have many voices answer you according to where you're at, where your heart is at. Fear of loss, uncertain. The uncertain voice can answer you. Fear can answer you. But you will know, he says, my sheep hear my voice. So if you've got this turmoil inside of you, to make a decision, don't make a decision. Wait. God will direct you. It's not the time to know what to do straight away. If that turmoil is in your heart, because the Holy Spirit is saying to you, wait. Wait for me. There's still something I need to do before you make this decision. And many times we run ahead and we allow influences to influence us. And we do something because they are influencing us. And there's pressure. So we actually listen to pressure. And that's not God. And God will, there will not be any peace in your heart while you do it. Well, it will be temporary peace, but it's not that full, complete peace. Family of God, we need to hear that. Um, last year, I was making a major decision on something. And I obviously didn't want to do the hard work thing between the lines. <laughs> and I, I was busy um, sorting out, opening up my blinds and curtains the morning. And as I looked into the mirror as I walked, I heard, don't do it. And I knew instantly what he meant. Don't do it. And I walked, I got my answer. Just the day before, I thought, <clears throat> and I actually verbalized, I'm trusting the Lord for direction. And he says, don't do it. Don't do it. And as I walked up the stairs and I was walking towards my prayer room, I immediately had the check. That was not God's voice. I recognized that was the stranger's voice. That's not God. And as I sat down at my desk and I took it to the Lord, the Lord says, exactly. This is my plan for you, is to take this route, not that route. And so God will confirm to you as well when he talks to you. Wait for confirmation. Holy Spirit wants to confirm. Don't be impulsive. Get impulse out of the decision immediately. Don't be pressurized to make that decision when you feel the time isn't right. Amen? Wait for his timing, his confirmation. And if confirmation has not arrived, don't let pressure force you in a direction. Are you all hearing that today? Because if pressure's voice is louder than direction, then it's the wrong voice you're listening to. Amen? Listen for God's voice in everything you do. Everywhere you go, he's the one who will keep you on track. And you know, I start declaring, my life's on track. My footsteps are ordered by God. Thank you, Lord, you order every decision today that I need to follow. We needed to make a, a very big decision, a huge big decision about um, property and zoning and all of that. And it was really burdensome. It was so intense, I must tell you. But when the Lord dropped in the heart, that's the direction. The peace just came. It took all the pressure away. And it was the route to take. And yes, it, sometimes uh, the, uh, the route you take and, and the route you need to take is not always cheap, is it? 
But listen, he says, everywhere you go is the one who will keep you on track. On track. On track. Verse 7 says, don't assume. When people start saying, I assumed you thought that. I assumed you felt that way. I immediately say, no, hang on. We can't, we can't talk on assume. If you didn't hear me say that, don't assume. Because assume means that it's not God. He says that you know it all. Run to God. Run from evil. And so we can see we've got to run away from the evil plan. Proverbs 3 verse 8 says, Your body will glow with health. Your very bones will vibrate with life. Anybody got vibrating bones here this morning? Is your bones vibrating after you've been in the presence? <laughs> well, you guys are looking a lot better now <laughs> than when you arrived. So I must say, this is definitely good. And so remember that he says, your body will glow with health, but the atmosphere of your mind has a huge impact on your life. It says, where the thoughts go, their man follows. So we've got to switch off the flesh and say, Lord, speak to me. Speak to me. Order my footsteps so that there will be great success. Right? And so we can avoid following the wrong path in everything. Right? We can avoid that because that's not of God. Avoiding it is better because we choose to honor God with everything you own. Give him the first and the best. And then the bonds will burst. Your wine, that will brim over. So our lives will be full, our lives will be complete, and we'll have nothing missing in our lives. Is that not beautiful? Remember, he uses a born again. I want to really look at that. A born again, recreated spirits to guide us. It's a born again spirit. It's the one that listens to the voice of our father. And so when we get the human, the old mindset out of the way, the old soulish way of thinking out of the way, we are then really ready to run this race with great zeal. So our concentration this week, allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you. Allow the Holy Spirit to minister to you this week. Allow him to talk with you. And set some time aside and say, Holy Spirit, I want to talk to you. Talk to me. But you know, start practicing those moments sitting at his feet and talking to him about whatever is on your heart. Because without communing with the Holy Spirit, you won't hear. You've got to hear from him in the first place. Amen to that? So the Holy Spirit may not tell us all the time, tell us the detail whenever we face something. But it is impossible and important to take the impossibilities away, it's important that we follow those hinges, that check in your spirit. If he tells you, don't invest there, don't do that. And there's so many phone calls of, would you invest? We just want to give you the greatest deal of your life. And da, 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 da. And will you come over to our network? There's a lot of marketing on the network. And you know what? If you don't, it's better to talk to a person than to talk to the phone and take the deal over the phone. Most of the times, it really, it's just such a lead down if you do anything over the network like that. Amen? And I know it's there to help us and to assist us. My youngest son, he loves to order his groceries to be dropped off at his home. He says, it's the best way, mom, you save a lot of money. If you walk down every queue, oh, it's a chocolate, it's a this, it's a that. I only go on the net, I order that, 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 and that's all I pay. 
He says, my grocery bill has come down. <laughs> because when you see, you didn't go there for biscuits, but you go home with a biscuit. Or you didn't intend to buy rolls and you land up with that. Anyway, but I am so glad that we've got the Holy Spirit with us every day of our lives. And that this week we are concentrating to grow closer and to allow him to elevate your life. Allow him to take you into greater victory because you've come out of the ashes and we're now standing as champions in the victory God has got for us. So just look at your neighbor say, I'm out of the ashes. You won't find any dust on me. I've been in the service. There's no dust. Just check the head. Any dust left? No. Been in the presence of the Lord. It shines. <laughs> There's no dust. Even on the back, it shines. The dust is gone. We are definitely standing elevated in the victory lane. And victory lane needs to be managed. Remember, victory doesn't do it for you. You've got to work your faith. Your faith is your responsibility. The word will produce, but apply it. Without applying, we're not managing our victory. Amen to that. And ashes, when they try to show up, tell it where it belongs, behind me. It is finished. You know, Jesus did it so beautifully on the cross. He said, it is finished. And he didn't have to explain why it was finished. He just used that term. And so when that old temptation comes, it is finished. With other words, it doesn't have power over you anymore. Because you're standing with the power and the authority of the Holy Spirit. That's your authority through his word. And so this morning, if you bow your heads, will you allow the Holy Spirit to check your heart this morning? Are you secure? If anything interrupts your life or anything in this world tries to remove life from you, the blessing of the Lord. Do you know where you're going to spend the rest of your life? We read in the book of Revelations that if we doubt, we can miss our appointment in heaven. So we don't want to be doubters because that's an evil heart because it rejects what Jesus did on the cross for us. He said, I paid it in full. It is finished. And so this morning, if you take the time and say, Lord, am I secure? Am I right? If anything interrupts my life, do I know where I belong? Is there anything Satan can use to prevent me from walking through those gates that are ordained for the sons and daughters of God. And when we get there, we want to hear Father Abraham say to us, enter in, welcome, offspring, children of God, blood-washed, Jesus, follow us. And so this morning, if you doubt in any way that whatever has happened in the past, whatever you've gone through in your life, that you feel that maybe you've just made too many mistakes, then maybe it's time this day to say, Father, I need your help. I need you. If you believe you need the Lord's help, why don't you just Indicate with your hand, I need the Lord. I need help. I want to be secure. I don't want to doubt. I don't want to wonder. I want to be okay walking with God. 
this morning, if you hear and you believe in many ways, you've given place to fear and the cares of the world that steals your joy and you need help, would you just raise your hand as well to the Lord so that he can see that you're acknowledging you need help. You need help. Hallelujah. And this morning, if you've been wrestling with condemnation and you're wrestling with, um, uh, if only I didn't, if only I did, if only others, and you're tormented by the mistakes you've made and you want to fix that, will you just raise your hand to the Father and say, Lord, I need that off me. I don't want any part of that any longer. God sees your hands. God sees the hands. And he's answering. He's coming alongside. And he's answering. Can I ask your assistance? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord sees your hands. And he hears that there are people here that need a touch from the Father. And this morning you might be in this place and you think, if only you know how quickly I give up. I run the race, but then I so quickly just let go of the promises that God has got. And this morning God wants to also realign your heart. God wants to realign everything to make it possible. So this morning, God is in this place and he's the one that wants to redirect your feet onto solid ground onto his favor, onto his blessing for you. And yes, we're taking longer. But if anything interrupts your walk, you want to be sure that you want to hear those words, welcome, enter into my rest. That's something to know and to be sure of is very important. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Will you stand in faith with, with Granddad? Will you just join your hand with him? Thank you, John. Thank you, John. Just stand in faith with him. You know what? We want to be sure. And this morning, as we just ponder on the things that we've been through, let's look at the cross. Let's put our full focus on the cross where Jesus sacrificed everything so that we had a way to enter in and for our names to be written in the book of life. And he willingly suffered, paid the most devastating price ever called for man to be, and he bared that cross plus all the humiliation plus all the mocking, plus them spitting on him, piercing him, suffered so that we could be children of God, blood washed, forgiven, and called by him. And so this morning, would you pray this prayer with me? Say, Heavenly Father, thank you that you offered up your son for me, so that I can receive forgiveness and this beautiful life that is only entrusted to the ones that believe. I believe today that, Father God, you offered up Jesus Christ to be my sin offering, to be the one that pays for me fully. And completely, I believe his blood was shed for me so that I can be cleansed from all unrighteousness. And today, 
I know that the Holy Spirit is a promise that you've made available for me to receive the Holy Spirit as my teacher, my helper, and my healer on a daily basis is what I receive. Thank you for forgiving me. And I believe that I am a child of God and that I'm called and set apart and truly anointed for this beautiful time that you've prepared for me in heaven. And from this day forward, I'm going to lay down the old and I pick up the cross and I'm going to follow you for the rest of my life. I thank you that I believe I'm born again, I'm blood washed, and I'm forgiven. And I am going to enjoy that beautiful life that you're preparing me for in heaven. In Jesus' name. Do you believe that today? And say amen to that. Amen to that.